the world is full of mysteries that even the most advanced technology of today won't be able to understand. There are unexplainable phenomena people have experienced centuries ago that are believed to be supernatural. These events are mostly attributed to the works of religion or commonly known as divine interventions. Let us go back to the story of the miracles of the church and discover the impact of these events in today's life. Born as Francisco Fergion in 1887, Padre Pio was an Italian priest who became famous for exhibiting his stigmata for most of his life. He served as an altar boy in a chapel in his earlier life. He stated that by the time he was five years old, he had already made the decision to dedicate his entire life to God. He was solemnly professed in 1907 and ordained to the priesthood on the 10th of August 1910. He threw himself wholeheartedly into the rigors of the Capuchin novitiate. He served for the church until on March 16, 1918, when he fell ill, complaining of loss of appetite, insomnia, exhaustion, fainting spells, and migraines. Religious devotees point to this time that inexplicable phenomena allegedly began to occur. During prayers, for example, Pio appeared to others to be in stupor, as if he were absent. One of Pio's fellow three years later claimed to have seen him in ecstasy and allegedly levitating above the ground. After celebrating Mass on September 18, while sitting in the monastery choir before an ancient crucifix, Padre Pio received the stigmata. He says he fell into a deal peaceful repose and an angel with blood oozing from his hands, feet and side appeared to him. When the mysterious creature left, he found that his hands, feet and side had been pierced and were bleeding. The Franciscan priest bore the same wounds as Christ did. Padre Pio struggled all his life with irritability, a problem that long hours in confessional and short hours of sleep intensified. But he redeemed his fault by putting into good use. He embraced his own great suffering as his personal share in the suffering of Christ. But he could not endure the suffering of others. He died in 1968 at the age of 81. Saint Pio was credited with thousands of miraculous cures during his lifetime and is still venerated as a miracle worker. There are many apparitions that the Blessed Virgin Mary reported for the past decades, but the most iconic is the one that happened in Zaytun. Zaytun is a famous district in Cairo, Egypt, one of the traditional locations that the Holy Family had fled to escape the slaughter of the innocents under Herod, the great king of Judea. From April 2, 1968 to May 29, 1971, the Virgin Mary appeared weekly on average, especially around feast days on top of St. Mary's Catholic Church in Zaytun for all to see. The country was in the midst of the Arab-Israeli conflict on the heels of the Six-Day War tensions ran in a high-predominantly Muslim country, home to a minority of Christians. The first apparition of the Virgin Mary at Zaytun was recorded on the evening of April 2, 1968, when a Muslim bass mechanic working opposite of St. Mary's Catholic Church in Zaytun thought he saw a woman attempting suicide by jumping from top of the structure. He couldn't believe what he saw. He called out to her, begging her not to jump. All the commotion drew a crowd. Then, a bystander's watch. The woman was covered with a bright light hovering above the cathedral roof and blessing the people below. The Blessed Virgin Mary was witnessed by hundreds of thousands of people, including cops, 
Catholics, Protestants, Muslims, and even secular Marxists like the former Egyptian President Abdel Nasser. Large luminous doves moved swiftly across the sky. The Vatican made no official statement on its authenticity deferring to the Coptic Orthodox Church. The Coptic Church investigated the matter and determined it was an authentic and true phenomenon. The civil government as well concluded that something real was happening as the tune. At one point, the authorities even investigated a 15-mile radius for electronic devices that cut all power off to the area to create a blackout. Yet, Mary continued to appear. When human life is over, a stage called decomposition occurs as part of the natural process. But this isn't the case for these saints, the reason why she's called incorruptibles. It is believed that divine interventions allows these bodies to be miraculously preserved after death to avoid the normal process of decomposition as a sign of their holiness. Under useful circumstances, nothing at all has been done to preserve the bodies of these saints. Even though incorruptibility does not automatically confer sainthood upon the subject, it is still properly appreciated by the Church as a supernatural occurrence. The first ever reported incorruptible saint is Saint Cecilia, the patroness of musicians. It is believed she died about 177 AD, 770 years later on 1599. Her remains were found in the same position in which the saint had died. Another incorruptible is Saint Robert Bellarmine, patron saint of catechists who died on 17th of September 1621. A great Jesuit preacher and professor of the Counter-Reformation whose prolific writings defended the truths of Catholic faith against the errors of the time. His body is displayed behind glass under a side altar in the church of Saint Ignatius in Rome. Saint Paolo Prasinetti, who was beatified by Pope Pius on June 8, 1930 and canonized on March 11, 1984. Corpses is displayed at the convent of St. Dorothea in Rome, while the body of Pope John Paul II, who was the head of the Catholic Church and sovereign of the Vatican City State from 1978 until his death in 2005, was being displayed at St. Peter's Basilica of the Vatican City. Another incorrupt corpse found belongs to St. Bernadette Subirus, who is best known for experiencing Marian apparitions of a young lady who asked for a chapel to be built at the nearby Cape Grotto at Massabiel. She died on April 16, 1879. Her body is currently still incorrupt and lies in the main chapel of the convent of St. Gildard in Nevers, France. The miracle of Lachiano is the first and many believe the greatest Eucharistic miracle of the Catholic Church. It is alleged to have occurred in the 8th century in the city of Lachiano, Italy. The Church teaches that in the sacrament of the Eucharist, the bread and wine become the body, soul, blood and divinity of Jesus Christ through a process called transubstantiation, which literally means that the very substance of which the bread and wine are composed changes into something different entirely, namely, the literal body and blood of Christ. The miracle happened in roughly 750 AD in the town of Lanciano, Italy. A Basilian monk was assigned to celebrate Mass at the monastery of St. Longinus, but doubted the true presence of Christ in the Eucharist. During the Mass, when he said the words of consecration, the host was miraculously changed into flesh and the wine into blood. The monk was awestruck. Weeping joyously, he regained his composure. The 
good light coagulated into five walnut sized globes, irregular and differing in size, while the flesh had the same dimensions as a large hose used in mass and appeared light brown in color. Both the flesh and the blood have remained perfectly preserved for 12 centuries and can be viewed in Lanchano to this day. The Eucharistic miracle at Lanchano is but one of the 132 miracles documented within the Vatican exhibition of Eucharistic miracles of the world. Other famous Eucharistic miracles covered in the exhibit include one that occurred in Bolsena or Vieto at Italy in 1263 and another which occurred in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1996. Relics are one of the great symbols of the Catholic sector. It usually consists of the physical remains of a saint or the personal effects of the saint or venerated person preserved for purposes of veneration as a tangible memorial. The most notable relic of the day is the blood of Saint Januarius, also known as Januarius I of Benevento. He was a bishop of Benevento and is a martyr and saint of the Catholic Church and the Eastern Orthodox Church. He is believed to have been martyred during the persecution under the Roman Emperor Diocletian during zero pie. After his death, faithful have requested the bodies of Januarius and his six companions. Someone who was part of that group decided to collect some of Januarius' blood. The martyr's blood was transferred into an ampoule, a small glass vial used to preserve a liquid which made its way to Naples. Now, his fame rests on the relic, his blood, which is kept in a glass vial in the Naples Cathedral. The liquefaction of the blood of St. John Warriors is an extraordinary miracle of the church that has been occurring up to 18 times each year for the past 600 years. While no natural explanation has been given, the phenomenon has been tested frequently and seems genuine. One of the reasons why he became the patron saint of Naples and of blood banks. On feast days, the Archbishop of Naples processes the relic around the cathedral. The faithful pray intensely and then it happens. Januarius dried blood begins to liquefy and bubble as the ancient relic is shown to the people of God. It is known and accepted locally and is considered to be a good sign up for the city of Naples and its region of Campania. In contrast, the failure of the blood to liquefy is believed to signal war, famine, disease or other disasters just like when it failed to liquefy on December 2020 in the midst of pandemic. 